So a lot of people ask me what this thing is, and it's just an old tote from a fertilizer plant, I think, or some sort of plant that they just sold a bunch of these off. I think we got it for 20 bucks or something, and uh, holds 250 gallons of water, which you would think is quite a bit, which it is quite a bit, but coming off of our roof there, it does not take long to fill up, and we've got cold temperatures coming tonight. So I need to get rid of the water in here before we crack this thing, which I do not want to do. So I think today I'll do some winterizing, my final fertilizer application, and uh, try to get over this sickness that I have. I have a video from last year on, I think it's called When, How, Why to Winterize Your Lawn, something close to that. This is happening here on our cool season turf towards the end of the season or right before the grass goes dormant. So it's in a state of sort of sitting there before it goes into its winter dormancy. And it's not growing a whole lot at this point, especially if you're getting temperatures around the 50 degree mark for a high and 30s in the lows. That will give us somewhere around that time frame when the grass stops growing its top growth. So the theory there is that the grass is still taking in some energy and storing that up for the winter season. So if I go and put some fertilizer on a quick release, I'm gonna be using ammonium sulfate today, then at that time, it needs to be watered in as well, so think about that. But at that time, before I get to a frozen ground, it can take in some of that energy. Some of it might stay there and sit there until next spring, and then you'll also have a quick green up in the spring. There's a lot of different debates on this right now. I talked about that in my video from last season, if you wanna watch that again. I think I may have linked to a podcast talking about some of the different theories about this now, if you want to know. So, I've got a whole lot of stuff to put away here yet. It always sneaks up on me. I'm sure it does to you too, or I think I have a lot more time work on things than I do but all right so if you're gonna go to a store and buy something I've talked about this before for fall fertilizer on this last application I want quick release most fertilizers you're going to find in the store are going to have at least a portion of slow release in there but all you need to do is look at the label right here so on this one I have 28% nitrogen and I have 3% potash and slight amount of iron in there if we go down to the bottom it will say 6% slowly available urea nitrogen from it being coated. So 6% of this 28 is going to be slow release. The rest of it is going to be fast. So that's quite a bit of quick release fertilizer in this bag. So you could get away with something like that. I did that in last year's video. I just used a regular bag of fertilizer from Menards almost identical to this, it was just their fall stuff. Totally fine, just go to the store and look at your slow release percentage in here, and hopefully that's a fairly low number. Okay, so why am I using ammonium sulfate for my lawn? Well, ammonium sulfate will help to lower pH slightly. It's going to take some time. Since my pH was 7.3, and I want a window of six to seven if possible. I'm not too bad at 7.3. This is a type of fertilizer that can help me to bring down the pH slightly into the optimal range. That's why I'm using this as my last and why I have been using some other things this year that contain more ammonium sulfate in there. So that gets back into the whole thing about understanding your soil and what it needs for nutrients. I've done some videos this season, I think a few last season as well, about testing your soil understanding what nutrients you actually need and so going forward if you want to do the best thing you can possibly do for your lawn that would be a good thing to do is do a soil test then you'll know where your pH is 
what you need to do to change some things and just have the best outcome possible. Some quick math, 100 divided by 21, there's 21% 21 nitrogen in here, it's 2100. 0, 0. 100 divided by that is 4.75 rounded, and that will be one pound of nitrogen on the ground. So I would need four pounds of this bag per thousand square feet if I wanted one pound on the ground. I'm going to be placing this on 3,500 square feet inside of my fence. If I wanted one pound, I'd have 4.75 times 3.5 for 3,500 square feet. That would mean 16.625 pounds it needs to go into my spreader and needs to be spread evenly across the area inside of my fence. Now that was one pound. I kind of want to go somewhere around a half a pound. So just cut that in half. Just roughly over eight pounds that needs to go in here. I can take this bag, pour it out into a container on a scale and get eight pounds if I want to. Or if this is a 50 pound bag, so if you cut it into fives, you'd have 10 pounds. So you could kind of eyeball it that way too if you wanted to. So you'd have one, two, three, four, five. Something like that. It's not gonna be a very large amount. Okay, I'm pretty close on that. Now I have a fairly small prill size, so I will set it as low as I can here and see what it's like spreading, and then I'll go up from there. Just wherever I'm getting an even spread, but still a small amount, so I would rather walk the area multiple times than have too much come out at the beginning. So I had it on a setting of two and a half. It seems like I can go to around three probably. Let's try that. So this is not a good thing here. So I went into the shed to get something and I forgot that when I swung the door open, my spreader was right there, tipped over, and a bunch of my fertilizer came out onto the ground. So what will happen is this will definitely burn this spot if I don't intervene. So I want to get my shop vac. I'm going to try to suck up most of this fertilizer and see if I can get it off the ground. I actually work pretty good. Definitely, I think that spot got a slight overdose, but most of it is picked up now, and I will water it like crazy to make sure anything else that's there will be okay, but I know we're gonna have an extreme green spot right there. If not this fall, probably come springtime because there's a bit of an overdose. So check that out. This is how much I pulled off of the ground right in that spot. So this thing is just called a lawn pump. I will see if I can link in the description to one that's similar to it. But essentially it's just a little pump. I got a suction hose on here, goes down into there, and pulls out all the water. Just a regular garden hose here so I can hook it up to my sprinkler. And it works awesome. You'd also think that it probably takes a while to empty out that thing, but honestly, it goes pretty fast. Today being cooler and the weather's cooling, Overall, it's not going to take me too long, and that's all I really need is get it watered in so we don't run into any issues with burning or anything like that since this is quick release.
So for winterizing the equipment, honestly, I don't do anything too crazy. Usually I will just change the oil in my machines. I, if I do that, it's ready to go in the spring and I can just get out and start mowing whenever it's ready to mow. So that's one thing that I do. And if it gets colder, it does sometimes become a pain to change the oil. So make sure you just run the machine for a couple minutes and then let the oil warm up and then you can dump it out pretty easily. The other thing is I always use non-ethanol gas. I know that some places you can't even get that right now. So definitely something that I recommend using throughout the year then would be fuel stabilizer or something to kind of help combat the things that can happen with ethanol and water getting into your gas. But for me, I can get non-ethanol gas, which is what I always use. I still usually just put some fuel stabilizer in at the end of the season and I fill up my tank and I run the machine just for a few minutes, get all that stabilizer put throughout the machine. I just fill up the tank completely and leave them like that. Some people like to empty their machines completely, let the gas run out. Um, I've done it both ways over the years and I haven't noticed a big difference either way. Maybe it's just because of the fact that I'm using non-ethanol gas anyway, but that's what I do. So that's really all that there is for winterizing. You can sharpen your blades, clean your deck, do all that stuff too, and have your machine all cleaned up and ready if you'd like to. I have probably one or two more mows of just leaves coming, so I'm not gonna clean this machine up yet. I may or may not get to that, but I can always clean it in the spring as well when warmer temperatures come. It often surprises me how many of us travel and go on vacation, but never find time to see the world outside our own backyards. I guess vacations are an escape from the norm, but turning off the main highway can feel so much the same. I have my grandpa to thank for all of this. He simply called it exploring, but I guess there wasn't much to do in the tiny town I grew up in, except find beauty in the simple things and in nature around us.
Over the years, I've become more and more attached to escaping my little world into a new one just a few miles away. There's something about the feeling of it that makes it seem like it's another world. Like I'm seeing something that only a few see who live here, and yet many never explore. The musical sound of the gravel. The dust flying up behind the truck. The miles and miles of land that to this day still look a lot like they did when the first settlers arrived here. My exploring one day led me to Madison County. And yes, it's the bridges of Madison County from the movie. I'm especially drawn to the feel of this wide open space. The often seen cornfields of Iowa vanish into heavy woods filled with old oak trees. The roads seem to go wherever they please without rhyme or reason, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a cow in the middle of the road. Or an old John Deere passing by instead of a brand new car. It feels like a place that hasn't changed much with time, and that's just perfectly fine with me. Maybe it's time to look at the map and pick a new place. Somewhere wooded or filled with nature and just enjoy every moment. Take time for the simple things in life. The good news is, they're not hard to find once you're willing to look.